Hey, welcome to the Masteries Meet the Mentor with Desmond O'Hagan. Uh, my name is Lynn Mazzara, and I'm going to be navigating for Desmond today. Um, and I just want to let you all know that these sessions are casual and interactive, and Desmond welcomes your questions and your comments. So please do uh, feel free to make them. And if you don't feel comfortable speaking or interrupting, you can always put your questions in the chat and I will read them out for you. Um, also a reminder that this session is recorded and will be going up on the Mastery's YouTube channel. And with that, oh, and I also wanted to introduce Suzanne who will be navigating for Desmond mm -hmm. Um, for his sessions that start this September or on uh, Wednesday, on Wednesday, this August the 16th. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, she will be able to speak to that. Um, so today, Desmond is going to share about how all art is storytelling. And his tells the story of interpreting light. And he will also be talking about his approach to his mentorship. Desmond O'Hagan was born in Wiesbaden, Germany, and was raised in the United States. He enjoys working in several media, but his primary focus is oils and pastels. Constantly challenging himself has translated into a fulfilling 35-year career in fine art, encompassing several one-man shows and participation in group exhibitions in the United States, Japan, China, Canada and France. O'Hagan has achieved eminent pastelist status with the International Association of Pastel Societies and is a member of the Master Circle. He is also a master pastelist with the Pastel Society of America and is listed in Who's Who in American Arts. Welcome, Desmond. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and thank you for all who join joining us. Um, this is a, a, a great, unique opportunity to kind of talk a little bit more about my work and also my approach to mentoring. Um, this is actually my third um, group session uh, starting. And um, as Lynn has mentioned, I've been painting now for 35 years professionally. Um, I guess until I get a proper job. Uh, so it's uh, but it has been a lot of fun. I have enjoyed this enormously and it's um, it is very fulfilling. I am able to uh, do what I always wanted to do. I do not plan to retire. So I think that that's partly most I honestly I can't remember meeting ever an artist who's retired. So this is a, a lifelong occupation, I guess. Um, as my view towards mentoring is, is similar to how I approach my workshops, I like to do a lot of critique work on uh, with, with different artists. And my goal is to kind of help, help you up maybe into the next level of your painting, whether it be technique, uh, your choices of subject matter, um, exploring different ideas, uh, sort of gently moving you out of your comfort zone. Um, and I think that that's an important part in growth when it comes to painting. Uh, what I have put together today is a slide presentation, kind of gives you an idea of the kind of work I do and, uh, and my approach to painting. Um, so what I can start with is we'll start the slide presentation. And uh, if I could take over the screen, that's possible. Yep, you can share share sure. your screen. Okay. Okay, can everyone see that? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. So, let's start. The first group of uh, paintings are going to be pastels. And the second uh, group is going to be oils. I work 50-50 uh, pretty much when it comes to oils and pastels. I find the oils and the pastels work well together in, in developing um, my own personal style. Um, and I like them equally. Um, 
when it comes to pastels, I love the the dry medium. I love the the purity of color. Um, when it comes to oil, I like the the sort of the fluid, thick, buttery strokes from oil, and the um, the sort of the luminosity of color, which they both have. So I really enjoy um, when I'm when I'm working in pastels. I'll switch and work in oils for a little while and kind of bounce back and forth. And I think that keeps me interested. Um, I tend to get a little bored fairly quickly, so I want to have be constantly challenged by new ideas. So we'll start off now with a few pastels. My primary approach to painting, um, like I said, I, I like to sort of even shake myself out of my comfort zone. So I'm trying a variety of different subjects. I really lean towards urban scenes. Um, I think they're complex and uh, challenging. This one is of New York, and it's a, a combination of warm and cools, uh, darks and lights, and um, sort of some intense colors and some muted colors. So those three categories are very important to me because I want to have a nice balance within those. And you can see the farther back in the painting, the, the, the more uh, loose the painting begin, it gets, whereas the uh, objects that are closer or figures that are closer get a little more defined. And this is definitely in the winter in New York. You can feel that, that coolness coming through. Yeah, and they're getting the sort of the reflections off of the light coming from through the windows, the storefronts, and uh, you can certainly see it from this, the side of this lady's face right here, and the side of this fellow's head. So it's, so it's the combination of warm and cool. You want a nice balance there uh, to really kind of uh, give your painting that charge. Mm. This is another pastel. It was uh, of a hotel lobby here in Denver. Obviously, the focus is this still life, sort of a grand, um, uh, what do they call it, uh, arrangement. Um, but you'll notice that much of the rest of the painting is very, very loose. I try to, um, in a way, kind of manipulate the viewer's eye with harder edges that will attract the eye, as opposed to areas that are somewhat less important. So I have my primary areas in the painting and then my secondary uh, areas. This is actually a scene in Paris, um, one of my favorite cities to visit and to paint. Um, I've been there several times and it's just like every time you turn a corner, you have a, a new painting, but it is very channel challenging. And it's not like, you need to go to exotic places to paint interesting urban scenes. You can find that anywhere. But um, it's always nice to tie in a place like Paris. Good food, lots and lots to paint. Desmond, are these uh, plein air paintings or are they photographs and you paint from photographs? Mostly what I'm working from is photographs. Uh, many of the scenes that I'm painting are very sort of spontaneous when it comes to light. Um, and I... It's, it's, I, I'm more attracted to dusk and night scenes, um, so, and, and movement. So it's a little more difficult to set up and paint some of these type of scenes because everybody's moving too quickly and it'd be hard to, to capture that. Mm -hmm. um, but I do enjoy planning paint air, plain air. Most of the times when I'm doing that, it's, it's more landscape paintings. Right. Where okay. everything is kind of sitting for a while. So, um, but no, these are all, I work from photographs and they're not very good photographs. I tend to just kind of shoot a whole bunch and then I'll move figures in and out of scenes. Um, but uh, it, the composing, and I think for me, the magic comes in developing the composition and the photographs become very secondary pretty quickly into the painting. I'm really only looking for, you know, some structure, some color um, in contrast, all of that. But photographs don't really give um, a very accurate view. Everything is very, very, very defined and in, 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 um, are uh, detailed. And I like to take away more from the photograph than add to use of all the what this offering me because photographs are very flat. And so they don't have that distance and atmosphere in it. So that's one of the goals is to try to create distance and atmosphere. But, um, but they are a useful tool. Let's see. This is a little still life. And this, my approach to painting is big shapes, slowly refining those big shapes into um, uh, more 
a little more detail in certain areas, the areas that I find important, but much of my painting is left in big abstract shapes. Another one at Paris, it's a waiter in a restaurant, um, but the approach is very, very spontaneous. You want to put your marks down and move on. Not a lot of detail, not, not overworking by any means. This is a scene on the coast out by California in La Jolla. Um, once again, light plays a huge part of my work. I mean, that's really what sparks my interest in any scene is the effect of light. And uh, with, that could be reflected light, artificial light, um, setting sun, evening light. All of that just is really jazzes my interest up. Um, during the middle of the day when there are no shadows and the light's just sort of kind of blank, isn't it? that much interest to me. So I'm looking for unique scenes and unique uh, effects of light. Another scene, motion, um, wanted to show the power, the power of the, of the ocean and the water and the waves. Well, you captured it beautifully. <laughs> oh, thank you. Is out in Southern Spain. Fortunately, I get to travel, you know, have traveled quite a bit. And um, that's one of the nice uh, um, side benefits of painting is being able to see some really beautiful places. And I was in Southern Spain for a cousin's wedding and um, you can always find something to paint. And this was from a scene of uh, a, little, a little village near where they were getting married. So a lot of, uh, a lot of color, um, bold direct strokes, with the pastels and my approach to pastels is almost identical to my approach in oils. Big, bold strokes slowly refine the areas that are that are that I find important and that I want the viewer's eye to be attracted to. This is kind of shows you how I start, sort of a loose uh, charcoal sketch. This is on UART 600 paper, which is not a very heavily textured paper. It's actually, um, um, uh, you know, not not smooth, but not heavily textured, um, because I, I'm looking more for a visual texture as opposed to a physical texture. I don't want to layer on a whole lot of layers of pastels, because that's a good way to start overworking a painting. And it causes problems when you ship pastels, where you have a lot of a lot of pastels caked on. So, you know, never know where that would go. You have you know, crumbs and of, of the pieces, particles coming down. So I like to be able to do maybe two, three layers, four layers tops, and then just really make your marks and move on. So this is sketched out. Then going in with my darks. Oh, interesting. So these are all, and, and so the, the sketch is probably about as detailed as I get. And then it's mostly just getting that impression of shapes and movement and in color and using the sides of the pastels as opposed to the tips of the pastels. And I'm not against detail. It's just that I tend to leave the detail towards the end of the painting. And that's when you decide how much detail you really want. Because if you start off with a lot of detail in a painting, you tend to have sort of a patchwork of a bunch of small little paintings as opposed to having something that holds together in a more solid form. Refining the, the street, it's a bit of the crosswalk, introducing some warm colors. Refining the shapes, the figures. Starting to move in some of the uh, medium value colors, refining some more of the figures. At this point, it's really mostly really it's an abstract painting or abstract a painting of abstract shapes that make up somewhat of a representational image so at this point what i'm really doing is just going to slowly refine the painting in the areas i want to and i'll change some of the colors and i'll move in from my light color my mid medium light colors to my light colors so i'm really only adding a couple steps here so but right now the main sort of structure of the painting is solidly there i'm just going to enhance it and so it's a big change from here to the next to the next level as you can see and that's the finished piece but if okay. you go back and this is just introducing these light grays into the into the street 
Whoops. Can we put it on pause for two seconds? Uh, you have to stop sharing your screen if that's what you mean. Okay, I was sorry about that. I didn't turn off the phone, so that's a problem. <laughs> oh, we, we can't even hear it, Desmond. Oh, you can't? Perfect then. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, it just went off. So anyways, nope. so this shows you basically uh, my approach to a sort of a spontaneous approach to, to um, big strokes and then slowly refining. So the difference between that and this was just basically the lighter colors and then adding in the lights and the yellows and the, you know, uh, the pinks and the colors, some of the sky colors. So it was just, and what I'm trying to convey is, is a sense of movement and that light at the end of the day. And then all the street lights and everything start to come on along the streets. And um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of a, a sort of a quick step-by-step -step of a painting in progress. Do you um, blend your colors or do you just let the pastels layer and blend as they layer? There's a bit of blending, but mostly layering. Okay. And um, I don't use a lot of pastel colors. Um, these paintings have all been, especially the one that you just saw, the step-by-step, -step, mm -hmm. um, it was uh, using a set that I designed, which is strictly just 40 colors. And I'm not mm -hmm. even using all 40 colors. So it really is a painter's approach to pastels because I'm using those layering of pa of colors to sort of mix colors a bit. And so it's similar to using a limited set of oil colors and then using those to, to kind of when you're brushing them on, you're going to get overlapping colors and everything. So my approach to pastels is very painterly. Okay. So it really is, it really is a, a painter's approach to pastels. Um, mm -hmm. I you know, And obviously you have sets that have you know, 500 pastels and a thousand pastels. So my my little set of 40 really makes um, me think about how combinations of colors are going to appear and which ones create, you know, a third and a fourth color. So mm -hmm. it's really, a, 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 for me, it's been a great process. This one was actually of a, a, uh, a coffee shop here in Denver. And I had this one up on Facebook and I got uh, interesting comments on it and people trying to find sort of an, giving me a narration of what they was doing. And the funniest part was that she was breaking up with him by phone, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was great. I thought was great. And he's he swallowing down the emotion. <laughs> yeah, he, doesn't, he doesn't look happy, but she could be right out of the 1700s, 1800s. You know, she had a very classic look. And that's what attracted me to this scene. And if you'll notice that everybody's on laptops. They you know, are. 25 years ago, it would be books in a coffee shop, but now mm -hmm. it's a laptop. So I think it's very topical. Except mm -hmm. for the relationship, I'm not sure that what was going on there. But also, <laughs> maybe the distance with the idea of being on a phone and everything, I just sort of hit me as very contemporary. Mm -hmm. Very much so. This is in Paris. Really love just the, the end of the day where the lights are starting to come on in the shops. And you get these reflections coming off the windshields. Um, and still using big, bold strokes. Uh, limited detail. I'm really only showing detail where it is apparent to me as say for the side of this car and the front of this car. If I overly detail that area, it wouldn't stay consistent on how I'm approaching the painting because that's areas that the eye wouldn't really pick up if you were standing on the spot. It's, it's really, so what I'm doing is I'm editing the photograph to what I think actually is the important parts and stuff, you know, areas that are in shadow are not going to be um, apparent to the viewer's eye if I and I want to create that uh, situation where you're actually standing there and you're looking at this scene so it's kind of capturing everything but eliminating a lot of stuff that would be uh, overworking okay. this is in San Francisco a lot of showing the buildings in the background the farther back you go the, the more diffused it is, the less detail it is. It's um, because there's atmosphere in, in, uh, in that distance and depth. And I wanna show that. 
as like I mentioned, the photograph is very flat. I want to show distance and depth in the painting. And so less, less defined is farther back in the painting. These next few slides are showing a little more of a, a micro look at my painting process using edges of the pastel, overlapping colors, letting a little of the paper come through. Um, this is what's creating that, that abstract quality that I'm using to um, approach a representational painting. You can see the different directions of the painting, the, the amount of pigment that's going on, and then sometimes a little bit lighter. Can you can see a little bit of the, of the paper showing through, which is sort of a, a, a dark burgundy paper. Directional strokes, you know, sort of thick. You can even see how much pigment is on this. And then as you, the stroke sort of ends, it's a little bit lighter. Overlapping strokes. Little hits of color, just a little bit of detail to imply detail, not to abs absolutely work out every little detail in the painting. So application of detail or implying detail. Big bold strokes. The looseness, this is a figure. And you can see all kinds of sort of abstract shapes around this figure. So those four or five uh, images come together and they make up this painting. Start off up here is number is one, two, three, four, and five. So it really is showing you a represent, and this is a very, very abstract approach. This painting is about, it's only about nine by 12 inches. So I am putting down those marks and moving on. I'm not spending a lot of time with uh with either detail or laboring it. I really want to get those marks down and using edges and contrasts and color to really make this pop out. So it's really, as mentioned earlier, the effects of light. You're seeing the light from the sky bouncing off the sidewalk. It's rainy, it had been raining. And so you're getting nice reflections in color. And that's more, that's the most important part of this painting. Without those reflections and the contrast between, say, these dark figures and that lightness of the of the reflections on the pavement, um, it would be kind of a more mundane painting. So I'm looking for those really strong contrasts that impact the effect of light. Mm -hmm. You're 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 giving us the way you imply detail is masterful. Mm -hmm. I am. Thank you. I am yeah. in awe. I mean, that female figure is very much a female figure. And yes. there's so little detail there. It is. Mm -hmm. That's right. I don't want to overwork. Because much by in painting, it's and I'm not a musician by any means, but the way uh, my appreciation of, of uh, music is you have slow parts and fast parts during a song. And I kind of relate that a little bit with painting is that you'll have, you, you know, you, as you're painting, you'll have slow parts where you're, you're applying a little more pigment, you're applying a little, a little bit more detail. And then you have parts where you have big, bold shapes, and that's when things get a little faster. But when you start to overwork something, that's when the music stops. And then the viewer's eye kind of gravitates toward that area that could be so, is to become so overworked. So it kind of stops the music when you overwork. So I like to put the marks down and just continue. This was um, uh, just a still life and it was uh, late winter. So I love the contrast of what's light and, and cold outside and definitely warm colors on the inside. Mm -hmm. This was a, uh, a little restaurant bar scene in La Jolla. And uh, a lot of it, once again, is light coming through the windows, reflecting off the, the top of the bar and uh, just figures moving, but not a lot of detail there. Your eyes making up that detail that's only loosely implied. This is another one I had on, I think it was on, no, I was showing this one to a group when I was doing a workshop and somebody mentioned, 
they thought, is that Darth Vader? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and it was a lady who had kind of like a sort of a, a bob haircut. And I was like, everybody sees something different. But no, it, yeah. was, it wasn't Darth Vader, but it sure looked like his helmet right there. Yeah. Which I thought was really great. This is another step-by-step -step, uh, on a gray Canson paper, steel gray, uh, urban scene, figures, trucks, cars, laying down those shapes after just loosely uh, sketching it in with, with a piece of uh, charcoal. But, and it's not really a drawing, it's mostly a map. I really wanna just map out the shapes. And that's what keeps me from getting too detailed. So then you come in, I come in with, uh, with the darks and some mid colors. Slowly refining the, my foreground a little bit. Adding in some uh, very warm colors. And then these last strokes are basically just the icing on the cake. Mm. And these are complicated. These are not easy to do because you want to make sure that your, your structure is correct, but also don't get so caught up in detail that it, you know, looks too much like a photograph. But so uh, kind of picking and choosing where the important parts are. This was actually a scene from a show um, I did on the contemporary New Mexico landscape. So this is moving definitely more into a little more abstract um, and more, I would say a little more into abstract expressionism. Um, and these were some close-ups of just late in the day, the sun's going down. So you're dealing with shadows and, and these um, just bushes out in the, in the landscape. This is another one, expressive strokes, um, hard edges, soft edges, blending. And this is still pastel? Yes, these are still pastels. Mm. And you'll, when you see my oils, you're gonna see that they're very, very similar approach. Mm -hmm. Big abstract bold shapes. Mm -hmm. This is a... Uh, area near where we live, just a little metal bridge over uh, a stream. But it was mostly what intrigued me here was the, the change from the sunlit area of snow and the shadow and snow. So really it's a change in temperature and values too. Mm -hmm. In Paris. Other outdoor, sort of a classic outdoor cafe in Paris. I feel like I'm visiting. <laughs> I really uh, do. <laughs> and, and I have paintings of other places too, but I, I sort of put this one together because I, I think it captures a lot of uh, what my interest is. Also, nighttime. Uh, this is just before this, the, the, the lights are just coming out in the buildings and the sun is setting. So this was fun because I could really play with the intensity of colors. And you'll notice the figures are, you know, there's no real definition there because they're somewhat backlit and you're just not going to come up with that, uh, that definition. So painting as if you were actually there on site. Mm. Some friends of mine in a local bar, very backlit as well. Denver during the snow. Uh, this is in um, Edinburgh, I think, in Scotland. Very There's much a pub feel to that one. Yes, it's classic indoor pubs. Uh, even the smoking, I thought, was interesting. <laughs> this is an oil. This is another uh, painting from uh, my show down in Santa Fe. Uh, that was the contemporary New Mexico landscape. So loose, big, bold strokes with a wide brush, 
and uh, slowly working from my darks to my lighter colors. And then actually using a little bit of a palette knife too, to broaden some of those um, big bold strokes. This is out in Newport Beach in California. So I love the umbrellas. That was really, it's more of a painting of the umbrellas. And you see this, the water is just sort of backlit behind it. Charleston, South Carolina. It was actually a gallery front window. So you see a little painting in the, in the gallery. Mm. Using, and you can see the strokes are so similar to the sides of a pastel. And the pastels are similar to the, you know, a width of a, you know, a nice square width of a brush. So the larger painting of um, in oil of the uh, ocean out in California, this is a 36 by 36. But this approach really translates well to any size. So it's just bigger brushes, more paint. You paint on canvas or can or a panel or uh, both actually. I okay. paint on canvas. I also paint on linen that's glued to panel. Mm -hmm. um, it's always on uh, some kind of linen or or uh, canvas. Okay. I like the texture, but not overly textured either. Mm -hmm. There's another one in California, on the coast. Paris. Love the reflections, light, cars, all of that. It's a painting of my time. You know, it's it's what I'm experiencing. So I don't mind putting in, you know, um, what do you call it? Um, electrical lines, you know, cars, headlights, um, stop signs, stop lights, all of that. I think that's all part of what we see. But you're right. I, I would be hard pressed to say, is this a pastel or an oil? They're very, very similar. Yeah. Extremely, yes, mm -hmm. very much so. Same approach. And I also paint in watercolors, but um, I tend to, I've leaned over the last so many years uh, towards oils and pastels. Another one of Paris, but you'll notice the tree, very abstract approach to the tree. I don't want the viewer's eye to linger too long in the tree. So it's very much, a, it, it, the tree very much supports the little more defined areas in the painting because you know it's a tree. You see this very abstract shapes all the way through. Um, the tree is just basically a painting of different values and letting that light come through. Night scene in Paris. This uh, house was on the way to my uh, son's school. And so we passed this every day, you know, when I would drive him to work until he started driving. And I thought that it's kind of a great structure. It's in Denver here. It's a great structure. It's a little dilapidated and a little worn, but it had good bones. And so this painting is about 36 by 48 inches. So oh, it's a pretty wow. good size painting. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice a lot of this is big, just big shapes. And once again, it's the effect of light. Also in Denver, as the sun's going down, this is about a 30 by 40. It's a bar scene in Durango, Colorado. Okay, so sketching this scene out, this is on a uh, gessoed canvas um, using a Conti crayon and sketching out the, the bus and everything. And like I say, what I'm actually doing is sort of a map as opposed to a really detailed drawing. I'm just looking to create as close I can to, I mean, it's not perfect, but it's, it's what it does is give me a good idea of where all the shapes are. Then going in with a brush and some, um, some warm colors, some cool colors, and just big abstract shapes. Bringing in some more cool colors, slowly refining, working on the foreground a little bit, working my way from my darks, my mediums to my lights. 
And lastly, the lighter colors coming in. So just showing the, the way how painting is just the, the process of getting through the painting. And there's lots of experimenting that's going on in between there as well. Do you ever tone your canvases? Yes, actually what I do is um, I make my own colored gesso and I mm. use a, um, a heavy bodied um, acrylic paint uh, by a gold, I think it's gold, and it's just a burnt sienna. So I put a few drops of the burnt sienna and mix it in with the white gesso. So I give it a kind of like just a tan mm -hmm. uh, uh, color there. And uh, that's nice just to avoid, you know, just painting on, on white. And so yeah. it gives it a little bit of a tone. So I'll go just a couple more here. It's a bar scene in Ireland. This is about 20 by 30. So I love figures, I love interiors, I love, you know, still lives, um, landscapes, urban scenes, you know, you gotta try, gotta try everything. It's another scene in Paris at night, it's about a 30 by 40 in oil. This is a 36 by 48. So that's brush and palette knife, scraping painting, you know, just cre creating that texture. And that's in Denver, near the Denver Art Museum. It's another large piece. And finally, this is one in Paris. Um, just love the motorcycle sitting out front. And this is about a 36 by 48. So that kind of gives you an idea of my approach and, and uh, my interest in a variety of subject matter and uh, just kind of what keeps me interested. So I'm gonna stop sharing. And um, so that gives you, uh, I think, a pretty good idea of my approach. Um, as for my mentoring sessions, I, I like to introduce new topics each session. Um, I keep it very casual and then have a nice uh, conversation back and forth. And uh, one of my primary goals is to address the participants' interest. That's why I asked the very first session is to come up with three to five uh, topics that they would like to talk about. And that can range from anything from the, you know, the techniques to subject matter, to historical parts of art, and also the business side of art. So we cover a wide range over the course of, you know, a you know, handful of months. And, um, and since my background was that I came from an I mean, I'd always painted ever since I was a little kid, I always drew and painted, um, but I couldn't understand how to make that an actual career. So what I did is I went, when I went to college, I studied architecture and fine art. And then I decided I didn't wanna be an architect. So I switched schools and went uh, to a school for graphic design. So I ended up graduating from there and working in advertising for four years and then freelanced. Um, but what was great about that is that it gave me a business approach to art and that and the idea of being able to promote and do my own uh, promotional material was crucial in building a career um, because you know a lot of this is promoting and marketing your work so you really want to have a good handle on that to keep a career going and um, and I always say with the support of a fearless wife when I came home, one day after a day in advertising and said, I think I'm going to paint. And she was like, great. She thought that was great. And then she switched her careers from uh, retail to hotels, which worked out great for us because we traveled all the time and stayed free where we went overseas because it was, uh, you know, you had these reciprocal agreements with different hotels. So that was a great deal of my education came from traveling. And um, so anyways, that, that was a real big part of that. So I'm, I will, in the sessions, I'll talk about artists that I really enjoy and learn from. And so I have a series of slide presentations uh, with interesting information to, to offer. So any, any questions? I am really interested. I, one of the things I noticed immediately when I went into your website was the 
broad range of variety of subject matter where mm -hmm. typically an artist, you know, they, if they paint landscapes, they paint landscapes, right? You paint absolutely everything, right? Um, which I love. And I just wonder after 35 years, how, how do you stay motivated? How do you stay inspired? Is it, is it because you paint so many different things? I think you got to stay interested. And my reasons for painting a variety is because I tend to, I think you can get bored very quickly with a certain subject matter. I like to paint themes. So I'll work on a series of paintings that would be, you know, say, obviously of, of, if I've gone to like Edinburgh and I paint a series of scenes of, of Scotland, um, and then I want to change to something completely different. And so I'll go into like figurative work or we'll do a series of still lifes. Um, and that's why I think you stay interested. If I was doing the same painting over and over again, I would shoot myself in the head, I think. It's just as too, that would, that would be, I would find very boring and very um, uh, monotonous. Mm -hmm. And I think that you want to stay engaged. I mean, it's just the hard, the whole artistic spirit. We all have that. We want to be challenged. Um, if it was easy, it would be boring. So, well, I love seeing the variety. I loved seeing the variety in your work. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I uh, love feeling like your paintings have a feeling um, behind it, like the bike, um, the cyclist uh, riding down the street and stuff. You felt the warmth of that evening. Um, mm -hmm. Like I can just imagine that sun uh setting and stuff and you just feel the heat of the sun and mm -hmm. and so yeah you you definitely have create that mood and ambiance of of the painting that immerse immerses yourself into it well thank you yeah I, I think that's such a big part of it is to engage the viewer's eye mm -hmm. and you want them to to experience what really sort of charged you for painting you know that excited you to paint that scene you want them to have the same impression and same feeling that initially drew you to that particular scene I guess that's what you mean when you say you're telling a story yes I think that's it and everybody sees something different mm -hmm. um, and that you do look I, at them trying to figure out what the story is right exactly I think there, yeah I think there's sort of a a slight natural narration in most paintings you kind of look at and see what the what interested the artist to, to spend time actually painting that scene and then you start to think about what was happening in that scene what, what were the people doing um, and of course it's all very spontaneous and these are glimpses because everything is different a couple seconds later especially in the urban scenes you know because people have moved on cars have changed and um and I, I, I haven't figured a way to get them all to stand still for a couple hours so I could, uh, you know, paint the paint the painting. But because everybody seems too busy, their cars are constantly moving. But uh, so that's why the camera is helpful in that in those situations. But as I mentioned, I love I love um, plein air painting. I had a really funny experience. I was part of a this festival. And we had about fifty artists, and we were all painting in different parts around Denver. And at one point, we were up in the mountains. And I found this pretty secluded spot. It was near a river with the waters running in the rocks and stuff. And I'm just happy, you know, painting away. And I hear these little kids' voices on this path nearby. And they come around the corner and they see me and they go, it's an artist. <laughs> and, and the mother comes around behind him and she puts her hands around. Him. She says, now, don't disturb him. And I was kind of felt like this exotic deer, you know, they caught me, <laughs> out, caught me out in the wilderness, you know, and I was on like throw my paintbrushes down and run into the brush. And I go, no, 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 come on over, come on over. They came over and they were looking at it and they were pointing at the painting and put, and it was like the, probably the, they would never have expected to see somebody doing this out there. This just was completely, you know, you know, it was it was really interesting because they were pointing out really interesting parts and stuff and and I thought this is what makes this so much fun. I mean these this was it was great and uh, so it was a great festival and um, but um, and it and it is one real great advantage about painting outdoors is to get you you really see the true light. 
You don't get that from looking at photographs. So it helps you if you're going to paint things like what I paint, which is a little more fleeting. Um, you want to make sure that you know what color looks like. So when you go paint outdoors and be constantly observing what's going on around around you, even if you're driving in a car at night, you know, you look and say, no, that's not really black. You know, there's combinations of warm and cools in there, dark purples, dark blues, um, sometimes even deep reds. And so all of that plays a part the minute you start to put a, you know, a brush on canvas or pastel on paper. So all of that is, a, is an important part. Be constantly aware of your surroundings and and the effect light has on your surroundings and um, so to me that you know that's just a constant career challenge constantly learning and i do believe that you have to be con you have to be honestly you have to be a student throughout your career yeah i agree you, if you're not you're gonna you, i think it starts to go sort of the other direction you know, and it, and it'll reflect in the paintings. The paintings will become less inspirational, I guess, mm. if they become too routine. But yeah. um, I just want to mention for Susan anyway, um, that in the chat, I put a link to Desmond's mentorship page, if you're interested, and also a link to his website um, for you to easily find more information about him. Great. Okay. Well, Desmond I'm really excited. So <laughs> we're starting on Wednesday. So yeah, that's great. I can't that's wait. great. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. You'll, probably, you'll see a lot of what I've just showed you. That's good. A yeah. Little more extended. But, I'll message uh, you later. Yeah. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. And nice I'm, meeting you. Nice to meet you too. Nice and, meeting you, Susan. And um, hopefully we'll, we'll, yeah, see each other soon and I'm um, looking forward to Wednesday. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lynn, Thank you, Lynn. for hosting. Bye. Thank you, Suzanne. Bye-bye, okay. Susan. Bye.